Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to yet another class for Electoral College Cohort XIII, Cohort 13. Um, we'll give a usual five minutes for the rest of the class members to come in. Uh, please call your fellow class members, party chairman. If you're in here, please reach out to your party members. We'll start in exactly another five minutes. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to yet another class. Today's topic is going to be communications in politics, the social media, the use of social media. Um, I cannot see our facilitator in class yet, but um, let's do our housekeeping. If we're here, remember to sign in with your name and your party. Um, I saw some people putting just their names. Don't forget to put your party so that your attendance will be signed. Um, let's keep our questions after the lecture. We would come and ask. We'll come and ask our questions. Either you put them in the chat box or you raise your hands, and we'll unmute you to ask it in person. Um, I think we'll give a few minutes for our facilitator. Um, when I see He's him, in class, here. maybe we'll start. Oh, okay, I can see him. Okay, <clears throat> okay, I can, I can see him. Um, okay, good evening. We'll go right into it. Um, today's topic is communications in politics, the social media, and it's going to be taken by none other but than one of our. Board of Trustee Members, Mr. Kevin Akoji. Mr. Kevin Akoji is a brand engagement consultant, politician, public speaker, security commentator, social analyst, and the serial mediapreneur. He ran for a seat in the National Assembly to represent Kogi East Central District in the year 2019 election. He is also the country director. He's also the country director for SDG Radio and the founder of Climate Action Nigeria. He's a University of Abuja alumni and the, and the prestigious class of 96 at the Nigerian Defense Academy, where he trained as a master in defense and strategic studies. An avid martial arts enthusiast, climate reality leader and alternative dispute resolution practitioner. Um, as, I, as I said earlier, he's also a member of our board of trustees. So let's make welcome Mr. Kevin Akoje. You're welcome, sir. Good evening. I don't know if you can evening, see me. Sir. Can yeah, me. we can see you and we can hear you loud and clear. Go right into it, sir. Thank you. Perfect. So I'll say firstly, Happy New Year to everybody. And it's great to be here once more in 2024, a year that we've been looking forward to for many things. And part of it is the 13th cohort of the Electoral College Nigeria. So today we're talking about communication in politics. Communication in politics, as it is, is a basic subset of the entire broad stroke of what we call politics or in the word political science. So as a political science graduate, we are looking at uh, basically how power is shared, how power is moved, and how it can be wielded and managed. And so being that it is that it's a science which is concerned largely with how information is spread, because remember we're talking about communication in politics, how communication or information is spread how this particular information influences individuals in a particular area, influences politics, influences policymakers, influences the news, the media entities, and what have you, because we're talking about communication in politics. And largely, this basically prepares, if I'll use the word, functional individuals of a particular ecosystem to be better or to be better informed or to be better armed with tools to make themselves better citizens as the case may be. But before we run into communication with politics, it's better that we understand what exactly is politics. In the definition of Harold Last World, we define politics as he who gets what, when, and how. And we all know that um, in Nigeria, he who gets what is someone that is running for, politics, for office. When? During an election cycle. How? Through an election process. And the election process starts with him vying for office, buying a party form, winning the primary. After winning the primary, you become a full candidate of that party. And then you go into a general election 
and then you come up with preferred majority and you are now given a certificate of return, that is the process of politics in this case, the exchange of power in a nutshell. And so since we're talking about communication in this particular politics, we will say, let's redefine that particular term to say, he who says what? Let's use, he who says what? To whom? When? Where? And with which medium? So if I repeat, because I'll need you to have that at the back of your head, because that will basically guide how we are going to have this conversation. He who says what, to whom, when, where, and with which medium. So this basically colors the entire concept of communication in politics in the electoral college as we seek to express via our classes and this is the certain cohort. So let's move directly into our slides because we're talking about the year 2024. We know that uh, it's no longer news that we have internet. And it's no longer news that individuals armed with as little as one MD can either make or mark the situation or can be instrument of false information or fake news. And so in all of that, we should remember particularly, especially if you have concerns or if you have value or if you have some sense of integrity, Yeah, so so and so time. What did he say in so so and so period? Is it just me or we are losing him? Yes, he's broken. If he thinks he did not know, I have screenshot his chart that he did. Hello, sir. If you can hear us, your network is breaking. Uh, we can't hear you now. Okay, guys, he has dropped. I think he would come back shortly. So let's just give it a moment. We'll be back shortly. Thank you. Hello. Oh, yeah. Yes, we can hear you, but your network is breaking, sir. Yes, yeah, you know how it is in Nigeria. The same mobile device I'm trying to manage to do this call. Everybody <laughs> speak calling. Yes. Okay. I can put up the data. Right. Attempt to switch off the. Yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can Hello. hear you now. Okay, yes, we so can hear you now. The internet never forgets us. If you say something in 20, 2006, Thank you. 
okay, I can see him in the chat box, but um, uh, if you can hear me, sir, we can see your back online, but not speaking yet. Sorry, class, let's just give it a moment and see how you would resolve the network issue. Hello. Yes, can we you can see you, now? we can hear you now. Yes, we okay, can hear you now. So, because the people will never forget, so because some people will be armed with screenshots of those your conversation or basic assertions or basic positions or opinion of that time. And if now you are talking from the other side of your mouth, they will call you to question, you know. So because of that, that is why we say the people will always remember. The next we ask, who are these people in question? The people in question that we're referring to are me and you. People that occupy a geographical area. People that occupy a political constituency. People that occupy either of the 774 local governments in Nigeria. Remember, we're talking about Electoral College Communication and Politics class in Nigeria. We're not talking about in Ghana, in South Africa, or in Cote d'Ivoire, as case may be. We're referring to Nigeria. So back to our basic understanding of communication, when we talked about it as regards um, our last definition being he who says what, to whom, when, where, and with which medium, we come to understand that poly so, uh, communication is broken into uh, a channel or is in a flow whereby there's a source of the information and this information passes through a medium. And this medium, sometimes called channel, is where the information passes through and this information is consumed by somebody who is called the receiver. And then that cycle doesn't end there with the receiver. It moves to what we call some form of engagement. That is the information that is being shared is going to elucidate either an equal and opposite reaction or a basic response. And when all of this is basically happening, there's another subset of what we call noise. Noise in this case are distortions. Noise in this case is fake news. Noise in this case is different measures that are employed to distort that communication process. That, that cycle, in this case, C-Y-C-L-E, not C-I-C-R, not C-I-R-C-L-E. Is TYTN communication circle because it's in a continued flow, is in a continuum. And so the noise comes to break or obscure or mold or mask the communication process. So your basic understanding of the existence of the communication circle in politics keeps you armed such that you know what happens whenever it happens and how you respond to it in the best possible manner. Because if you do not know that, then would you be able to be successful to basically fake news, basically any body analysis on TV or on social media, and then you now fall prey to these issues. And then we also talk about basic communication theories. We're not going to all of that. Theories of perception, act of seduction, that is a different conversation altogether because we only have one hour and it will not, not be enough for us to go through. So basically what we'll be looking at in this class is the responsiveness and engagement level in this entire communication process. How do we respond and how do we engage in the communication process in politics? Remember, we're talking about political communication. He who says what, to whom, when, how, and with what effect. And I remember earlier I talked about the communication flow where it moves from the source the medium, in this case, the medium, what medium of this political communication moves to. So we'll be looking at broad cases of the users of the web. We'll look at broad indication of users of social media. We'll look at the indication of users of mass media and what have you. So all of these are things that come to bear in political communication. So it is very important that we know what particular medium. If you understand the medium that is being used, you'll be able to relate effectively. And then also remember, this class is not just enough to give you the tools to understand what to do. It's also giving you the tools so that should you want to run for office, and let's say you have a lean budget, or even if you have a robust budget, 
you know how to be able to work with your team so that you can be on the same page. I'm sure we all know that um, after Nigeria won South Africa and uh, and Afghan League, we saw that some individuals went and edited the Wikipedia page of Amapiano. What does that mean? If somebody comes now and has no idea of the definition of Amapiano and goes today to check the definition, the first confusion the person will have is, oh my, it's like it's the source from Nigeria, not knowing that this was actually the started fact. And so that is why I said, you need to understand the tool of communication so that you are not fooled by fake news. Remember, the battle against fake news is very strong and very severe in 2024. Very, very important that you know. So should you be trying to run for office, it will be necessary that you explore digital tools or digital media to express your candidates. In this case now, the first of its kind is using a website. If you want to run for office, it will be necessary that you do not make a very uh, ambiguous website to be your uh, address, your URL. So take for instance, you'll be saying Akoji for Senate, Biden for President, Trump for Mayor.com. Simple and short, so that even if somebody is just looking at the website, the person can relate and understand what you are referring to in the first instance. You know, so that is what we refer to as the URL. And then when we talk about HTTPS, we always love to make a, a robust conversation on the web because the website uh, platform is where many discussions can come to play. And so it's not enough for you to create a website and put in place your manifesto or your pledge as the case, case may be if you are running for an executive office or manifesto if you are running for executive office. If your website is not secured, the possibility that it can be hacked is very high. Mm -hmm. and so you might be busy saying people power or people power progress as your motto. But somebody goes, hacks your website and says people not sense responsibility. And then if you do not have a team that is on their toes to notice that some changes have been made on your website, you will basically not have an idea until an, an unseen person has come to visit your website and is now consuming information that is not supposed to consume about your candidacy, which basically sways them in the wrong direction. And you know that in politics, in this particular communication process, we are striving as much as possible to control the narrative. Because the moment you cannot control your own narrative, it means your candidacy is thrown to the wind. It means what you stand for as a, as a party is thrown to the wind. It means what you stand for as an electoral manager body is thrown to the wind. Remember, I'm talking about the website now. We're not only referring to individuals that are going to run for office. The entire uh, stakeholders in the communication process, so be it an individual, the election management body that, in this case, INEC, being that be, be a party or the government of the day, if they don't have a specific medium in which they can share information to the public, there's going to be a problem. And if this means in which they are sharing information to the public is not secure, then it can be distorted by anyone. We know among the developed countries, we still see till date in 2024, they are still talking about cases in court about how Russia infiltrated or basically tampered with the US politics. So you know that even the high and the mighty can be swayed or their conversation or the narrative that they put in place can be changed if you do not take charge of what you have. And so when you have set up this website, what do you want to have in the content tab? You want to have either history, origin, bio, my manifesto, things I stand for. You know, so facts and figures about your constituency. So take for instance, if you are running in Jama and local government, you should not be talking about things that are happening in uh, in Udupani uh, local government in Cross River. You need to be talking about what is happening in Jama local government, talking about the facts and figures, how many words, how many people, what is the history of the political representation in this unit and how you are coming to make be of value and take over that position, especially in this case where you are applying for an office. Then when we say search engine optimization, we all know that Google is a great platform that most of us here in Nigeria use effectively. And so you'll be talking about how you want to start for something and then you go and employ the user of Google. And so if your search engine optimization is not effective or not existent, if someone goes to search for you, you might be on the fourth page and we know most Nigerians, after we look at the first page, if we don't find what we're looking for, we have closed that tab. 
you might not be patient enough to move to the next stage and to the next stage and the next stage. So your strategy optimization needs to be firm and focused. And then since we're talking about web, we're talking about adverts and promotion on web platform. So we have platforms like in the uh, 360 of the com, just uh, these are influencers that are using or basically looking using the web as the meanest oil tool to express information. Uh, so it will not be a bad idea if you take, for instance, now you are running for an office in Kogi State. Tundi Ednot is from Kogi State. You know he has a huge Kogi State following. And you pay him a naira or two to put your campaign poster on his page for 24 hours. What does that mean? Your candidacy has been further showcased to a, a, a demographic in question for them to see. You know, so this, uh, this is a typical expression or a typical example of a medium which information is brought out. We have mass media, and then we have different types of mass media. We have um, um, billboard, outdoor media. We have the, we have television. We have newspaper. We have radio. You know. So, and then the most important one that we always talk about: social media. We'll get back to that because, like I said, we're trying to arm you with tools to just keep the ground running. In the case if you're trying to run for office. Or hit the ground running if you want to fact check information. Or basically hit the ground running if you're trying to seek information to clarify or verify about a candidacy, about a particular issue. Because at this age and time, I don't think you have uh, the liberty of having a concern and you want to phone a friend when you know that you have 50 MB and you can basically explore the tools of digital media and verify the information in no time and then take the decision, an informed decision about the the concept in question you know so in talking about all of this especially we'll come back to the mass media option we need to know that there's a basic narrative that it wants to be shared out and so if you yourself do not understand that narrative then um, what there's this magazine that said um, without responsibility something is lost I, I, if i remember i'll bring it back but if you do not understand what you want to do in the first place then abuse is inevitable. And so if abuse is inevitable, then there's going to be a problem if you are trying to control your narrative. We have social media. Most of our digital devices now in 2024 already come pre-installed with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. What do we use this platform to do? Luckily for us, most of these platforms, you can create profiles for free. And so if you can create profiles for free, it means that you can be on this platform. It means that if I am the election management body, in this case, INEC in Nigeria, and I know that over 64% of the youth explore the use of social media to basically express their opinion or seek information, then it behoves on me to ensure that I create a social media handle for INEC and ensure that there's timely and prompt information being shared on that platform at all and every time. And so I as an INEC will take a strategic communication decision to ensure that we are on that platform and we have social media managers putting our content daily to ensure that whatever that we're talking about INEC, either news reporting, whether it's uh, in the case of football, VR, or uh, <clears throat> what do we call um, this platform that we used to check election results before, uh, the name will come back to me again. You know, so those are the things that you're supposed to put in place. And we all know that in as much as these four platforms are the basic ones that we know, there are a whole lot more social media platforms. But while we're focusing on these four, or like the five, is because we are expressing different types of information. And the information could be text, it could be graphic, it could be video, it could be audio, it could be pictography. It could be picture. And so, and it could be an information that you are sharing with a view to network with a certain sense of set of people. And so, we we'll advise you that if you are looking at networking to improve your candidacy, so if you are trying to run for office in an elite area, for instance, uh, it is not out of place to put your candidacy on LinkedIn. Or if you are a corporate organization and you are looking out for good hire, it will not be out of place to put a profile on LinkedIn because LinkedIn will recommend you to individuals that are good hire 
LinkedIn will put you in a position to meet persons of like minds of professionals, you know, and what have you. And then if you're looking at uh, a means whereby you want to be sharing a whole lot of video content, then you know that you cannot run away from YouTube. And in this case now, thanks to Facebook and how they've made their platform more robust, you can post your videos also on, excuse me, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, such that um, people can also consume that video to a certain degree that in the case of learning. But we know that YouTube is the master for that because you can dump a whole two-hour video explaining whatever you want to explain on YouTube, but you cannot do that with Instagram, Facebook, or X, as the case may be, Twitter, you know? And then so, if you are blogging, that's simply putting out information for people to see, hear, and understand. Then you'll be looking at how you use WordPress engine for your website, a blog app type. You know, we remember the age where everybody had a blog. And then it went on and on until people now moved to website. So blog, WordPress, WordPress engine is what most people use to build their website. And so in this case now, I'm talking about text, uh, extensive use of text to showcase information. If you are using a whole lot of pictures, then you're looking at platforms like Flickr, Pinterest, Instagram, as the case may be. And then if you're looking at basically basic banter, and then now we have Twitter spaces, then you're looking at Twitter, which is what we call in professional terms the micro blogging platform as one of the things that you can uh, do. Uh, 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 ideas of political communication, we tend to move the entire concept into what we call a marketplace. In the marketplace in the sense that when you are in the market, you are going there for something. If you are a stakeholder in the market, be you the union, or you that is offering goods and services, there's a reason why you are here and there's what you have to offer. It could be the same or it could be different from the next person to you. But basically, what happens in the market space is that it is an equal opportunity environment. And in everything that is happening, somebody somewhere is trying to sway somebody into their own narrative. And so if you are coming to buy meat and you come to the meat section with over 20 people, you see that people will enter that meat section and go to a particular person to buy from. It means they've understood the mass communication, they like how the man shares the meat or gives them meat and gives them extra or yara as we call it in the house north, you know. And then he has basically swing them with society. So that is what we call the crux of the matter in political communication. You need to put your narrative out there and then get the buy-in of people. When you get in the buy-in of people, then you can be able to push them towards your own narrative. You know, why do we talk about the marketplace? Because there is indeed a problem to be solved. In the case where we're talking about the electioneering process, I mean, there is the problem in this case is that the seat of the president needs to be filled again after four years. The seat of uh, the senator representing Kogi is needs to be filled. The seat of um, the person representing Jama Dogon Karifi local area in the national assembly, in the state house of assembly needs to be filled. So that in this case is the product. And then if in case of someone trying to buy for office, I'm coming to buy for office because I have a sense of value and a sense of service to offer. And so that is why I want to run for office because people don't just wake up and run for office. They must either be a burning desire, passion to serve, or like we know in Nigeria, you have all the right links. You're born from a thoroughbred family or you're born from a family of kings. And so it's your turn to be a king. And then you go ahead and express your passion. But remember, we have the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria at the back of all of these conversations. So in all of what we're doing in this whole political communication, remember, no form of illegality should be brought to bear because if illegality is brought to bear, you will be the one to answer for all, to bear the crux of this particular challenge. You know? And so now that we've talked about the passion in which individuals are coming to play in this ecosystem called the marketplace, we have in this, con in this conversation talked about Basically, a product or service, 
or somebody coming to offer value and this value has a price, the price being your time and attention, the price being the amount of money you bring out from your pocket to purchase your form, the amount of money you bring out through t-shirts, advertisements online, a website, a media team, a, 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 a media team that will be doing social media, a media team that will be taking pictures and videos. Because we all know that now, you can't just basically up and come into the ecosystem and then say, I have no shoe. And then you think people will just follow you and put you into power. No way. You had better go and borrow a shoe. You had better make a shoe with sneakers or whatever you have. Make a shoe, look comfortable, look presentable, and get out there and sell your market. And in this case, the place. You know, so back to social media, we have extra responsibilities with the usage of all of these platforms. Now we all know you can't go and do plagiar or plagiarize a video. So take for instance, you carry a video that is not owned the proprietary rights, yes, that's the right word. And you post on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. The first thing that those platforms will do is kill the audio and say you have no right to post this video. Can you take it down or note that this video it's only it's not available in X and Y country. You see, for Instagram, they'll list the amount of countries that it's not available. For YouTube, basically, they'll just kill your audio. And then if you continue repeating certain videos on your platform, YouTube will just yank down your channel. You know, for LinkedIn, basically, like I said, the extra responsibilities that you have on this platform. You know, LinkedIn is a professional platform, and so I don't expect you to come and be posting uh, just prayers all those plenty things that people do in WhatsApp group or creating some kind of sense of banter. If you want to banter, go to Twitter and take your time out or go to Instagram and go to comment session and have a field day. Or you go to Facebook and have a field day in comment session. But you cannot come and start using all of those field techniques on LinkedIn because it won't work. And so in all of these platforms, you need to know the maximum amount of text you can post. You know that for X now, if you have a subscribe profile, you can post unlimited text, you can post longer videos, you can cross post, you know. So if you do not understand the basic um, governance principles of this platform, it's going to be a challenge should you want to use it. So the first thing I'll tell you is, like I said, this class is like a basic general introduction into political communication and the tools in which you can use for political communication. So we cannot go in depth into all of these services because we cannot exhaust it in the one hour where we have to teach and at the same time we also need to ask questions. So we, I know we all have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and LinkedIn, same with YouTube or Zoom that we're even using now. And so because you have all of this, we will say, see, if you have an information to put out there, we are very lazy as Nigerians. You will not post something on Twitter and then you put a link to YouTube for me to go and watch it. It is my data. I won't click that. If you want me to consume it on Twitter, then put the information for me right there on Twitter. So I consume it again right there on Twitter. Or if I go to YouTube, let me find your channel there. And so basically, as an election management body, as a stakeholder in the, in the electoral system or the political communication process in Nigeria, you do not have anything to lose should you create a profile on all of these platforms. Let it be said that whenever anybody on any platform and they are seeking information about you, your candidacy, or about any issue, they can search and find you on those platforms, consume the information, and make an informed decision. That is the idea. And so, because you have all of this at the back of your mind, you need to ask basic opinions or basic questions before posting anything on this platform. And so, this idea about what to post on this platform is because it colors also what you will post on your website. It colors also what you use. You want to use a video or audiovisual. And so the first thing you ask yourself is, this update you're about to share, does it have value? Does it create value? Is it going to be informative? Is this particular information you're going to share, is it going to speak to your target demographic? Remember, if you're running for a position in Kogi East, is different from Undukwa North, or is different from Jama'a West. So, if you are putting anything, you need to identify and ensure that that information is not ambiguous, but appeals and relates to the demographic in which you are trying to share. Then, is this particular update related to you, what you do, or your candidate? 
So I do not expect you to be running for the post of Senate in Abuja, and all you are talking about all throughout your campaign is what is happening in Patakot or in River State. That is absolute rubbish because you are basically not even exploiting the audio time or the time you have with your demographic in giving them information. And the last thing that I talked about, the basic governance principles of the basic platform, if you understand the basic governance principles, you'll be able to know what to do. So in summarizing the usage of social media, because that is the one that we always love to go in detail because it's the one that is easily consumable. We have a slide that shows the social media strategy framework. It's nice that you can take your time and digest the entire process as it's contained there. If you understand that, it will help you move into how you can get what we call the returns on investment on an effective and robust social media strategy. You know, and then with all of this, we know we have what we call listening tools. Listening tools in the sense that, so if you use Meltwater, for good, for example, Meltwater is a software that is being used by most uh, Fortune 5 companies. And your name, the name of your organization, or a particular tagline mentioned across any social media, it will basically flag it. Basically flagging that information for a digital, for a digital, officer to come and review and see what are they saying about our organization, what are they saying about our candidates, what are they saying about our political party, what are they saying with regards to these issues. We are hearing things about local government autonomy. What are the people talking about local government autonomy? I'm the chief of staff of the president. What are people talking about as the president? What are they talking about our presidency? You know, I'm the secretary general to the federation of the, of the, of the country. I'm saying, okay, I want to feel the pulse of the people. I want to understand how the parasitals and the MDs are related. I want to see how the PGs are basically managing their staff. You know, these are basically things that you look so that's what I'm saying. In what we're using what social media strategy. We are looking at your political communication strategy. You can replace those words with any particular subset in the political communication con context because all of these are mapped into a way in which you can be able to basically return, like I said, return on investment. We're using economic terms now because, you know, we've basically moved the political communication process into a market, you know. Next is how do you manage this correspondence on this platform? We know that there are so many people that have now become higher than mighty, you know, your platforms, and then people comment on your page, they ask questions, and you do not engage. Remember, in the beginning, when we talked about the political communication process, the engagement is basically what we are after. You know, that engagement is the crux of the matter because it's what now makes the continuum of the continuation communication process. You know, so if that engagement is not there, then there's going to be a very serious problem in basically trying to understand how you manage your correspondence. So you could have a robust team that is looking to it, you could be employing the services of AI, you know, and what have you. And then how do you manage your campaigns on social media? Like I said, uh, if you have a lean budget, you need to know how to do it yourself. Or if your brother can come, you teach your brother how to do it. Or you send your brother to a training school and get um, digital tools for advocacy and they help you manage your correspondence. Or you have a company. Well, in this case, the election management body, INEC, takes to ensure that they want to be around 247 on the internet. And then they employ the services of a consultant, and then they make do with their duties. At least we all know that for start, the NTA we knew of that time is different from the NTA of now. Because the NTA of now is dropping breaking news every minute, every second. They are putting good updates. And they are now becoming a medium of repute for us to even verify information. Before now, we don't worry about NTA because we know that there'll be, today there'll be, in as much as we're having an election today, they'll be showing a documentary of sort of right on TV. But now that is not the case of the matter because we don't have basic competition because we, have, we now have other news platforms that are competing for the same airtime that NT is also competing. So if they do not stay competitive, they will be thrown out into or they'll be thrown into oblivion. You know, social reporting, analytics, you know, we talked about social commerce because we're talking about the market environment. We talk about trends acting. So we saw the Afghan match between Nigeria and South Africa being transacted by almost all companies, some in favor, some in mockery, some in violence, as we call it in Nigeria. You know, so these are basic means in which you can share or express information for people to see and understand. 
and like we talked about the communication okay. process. Take the mic, then, for some. Yeah. Okay. So, because we're talking about the communication process, it's necessary that we understand how to talk, when to talk, who to talk to, the mannerisms, the mediums, and how to control the narrative. Remember, we had earlier on defined communication as he who says what to whom, when, where, and with which medium. And so, because we have that at the back of our mind, to know how to talk. And so, I'm running for executive office. I can make bold and say, when I become governor, I will tack 20 kilometers of road from a police settlement to a police And then, if I'm running for the executive office, I will say, by the time I get to the National Assembly, your hopes, dreams, and aspirations, I will harness them and ensure that we propose bills that will bring out the emancipation of our people and indeed the entire people of Nigeria. You see now, they are talking within the, uh, within the realms of the offices they occupy. And so I do not expect to hear electricity officer coming to say, by the time I enter office, I will buy you transformer. I will buy you this. He is not an executive officer, and those are out of his purview. Yes, in Nigeria, we have an anomaly called constituency project, but it's because of our own way of physically uh, interpreting our democracy. In our own wisdom, we saw that the people in the National Assembly were taken for granted, and then because we want them to look powerful, we now created what we call an unconstitutional. Uh, Let's call it an, let's just say that's an anomaly. And so we put some money aside in the budget and say, dear honorable member, distinguished officer, take 5,000, go back to your constituency and do what you call the constituency project so that the people will be feeling you. Because if you say you're only sitting down in Abuja and pulling out bills, the common man might not know whether that bill will affect his own life or his existence and they might take you for granted. And so they do that. So you need to understand all of this. When to talk. And so if you are running for office, you know that you need to be very expressive of yourself and your candidacy before the window in which to be banned on campaigns before the election. And so if you do not know this, you might go and talk at the wrong time. And guess what? The opponent will use that against you and they will call for the annulment of the election or a rerun. And you don't want to have that. In Nigeria, money is hard to find. So you don't want to go and start a campaign successfully complete an election only for someone to come in the election tribunal and say, you did the X, Y, and Z at the wrong time as such. Based on that merit, you are calling for a result because uh, so uh, candidate X and Y were campaigning when they were not supposed to campaign. You know, so these are the things that we, uh, we need to understand. So who to talk to? Like I've always been mentioning over time, you need to understand your demographic because if you don't understand your demographic, you will not know how to express your communication and information. And the mannerisms, I'm sure right now, sitting down here and talking to you, it makes ease for a conversation. So imagine that I was wearing a football jersey, playing football, and then at the same time trying to give this lecture. It means in, in all intents and purposes, my mannerisms are out of place and you will not basically understand what I'm talking about you know, the medium, because you want to express information, you need to know the medium to use. You want to let the people in your area know that you're running for office, you do a billboard, if you have the power to do a billboard financially. If you can do a billboard, you do pamphlets. You do pamphlets and share. If you can use social media, you do adverts and promotions on that platform, so that whenever anybody opens those platforms, you'll see your adverts and promotions. You know, in all of this, you all know the narrative and how you are trying to control the narrative. And so, one thing people always forget in this entire communication process or political communication is that the basic stakeholders, in as much as we have said everything in its entirety, we need to re-mention them again, especially in the electoral process, because we are the electoral colleagues. And in as much as you are politically literate and do not understand the electoral process, and you are an alumni of the electoral college, then then there is a basic gap in your training as a member of the cohort. And so this is an attempt to reiterate once more, to let you understand that in the political communication process, there are different stakeholders. 
And we are first, in this case, now identifying a political party. We all know that in Nigeria at the moment, you cannot run as an independent candidate until it is passed into law. Until then, you must run under a political party. And so you must be a card carrying member of a political party because you will need to give a photocopy of your membership ID card in the form you are going to submit to INEC when you buy your form to run for office X or Y. You know, so um, your nomination form and then uh, the so your nomination form basically has um, information of people from your ward, your constituency signing to say, yes, we know this person who's from our place and we, where we support his candidacy to run for office. And then the political party, remember, one of the greatest things that INET has done in our ecosystem is that no two political parties are the same on paper and in ideology. You can say whatever you want to say outside, but if you get into the shop called INET and you look at the taking process, that it takes to register for the two parties, you understand what I'm saying. I'm talking about, I'm saying this with so much strength because I was a member of a teaching group and we founded a political party. And I know what it took us document wise to ensure that we have our own narrative to put out there. And so you will not be in an ecosystem where you be complaining about government and then you have not joined the political party or you have not shown a particular affiliation to a particular set of people, a particular party, so that when you go and vote, your vote will matter. Like they said, uh, one of the greatest, um, one of the greatest lies of the devil was to tell people he doesn't exist. It also applies in politics. When they tell you politics is a bad game or politics is a game of bad people, if you say that and you fold your hands, then the bad people will continue doing the politics and rule over you and you have no reason to basically quarrel. And so you will just be quiet and watch them and hope you do not die in absolute penury or disappointment or depression as this may be. You know, the political process. In this case, we're trying to elaborate on how politicians and the electorate communicate because this came up through one of the cohorts and we had to add it in this course, you know. And in this basic process, we have the political process, which is what I emphasized earlier, an election process, you know, after you have come out as a candidate in the political party, you now go to the general election, the elections are done. After the election, certificate of return is issued out upon the publication of election results. And then next is tribunal, election tribunal, in which people who feel badly about the process can come and express themselves on a particular subject matter and their their, their basic ideas are now weighed and reviewed and it might amount to either a rerun or another person that was not declared winner, the declared winner in the light of new facts and figures as the case may be. You know, so that is the experience that the next option is what we call a recall. This is a democratic government. The people in a particular constituency can actually put pen and paper and say we want to recall our honorable member in the House of Representatives because he is not representing us well. That is a process of political communication. Remember what is the title of our class? Political communication or communication in politics. So this is a typical way in which the people communicate with people or people in power, people that are representing them in a particular subject matter, and so they can now say, oh, you know what, we don't want this man to present us anymore, we want to recall him back. And we have a particular case in Kogi State where the senator was, basically an attempt to recall him was done, but he did not say true. I will not go into referendum because we basically not use that as a tool in Nigerian politics, so we leave that to the advanced, from advanced democracies that have explored those tools. Then other means in which we do political communication we have town hall meetings. In this case, uh, it could be before election, it could be during election, it could be as a means of information, discrimination, you know, and what have you. So we see place of agencies like the National Orientation Agency calling stakeholders in a particular subject matter, basic opinions to basically improve the federal character and the spirit of nationalism in people, and they are inviting all chiefs from 
the seventh senatorial district to come for a town hall meeting for them to come and educate them and a basic awareness drive so that when they go back home, they'll go and train the trainers and basically water down the information that they've learned from there. So these are different means in which we have uh, political communications or you have ward meetings, ward meetings whereby the candidates are coming to see their members, speak to them about their candidacy, ward meetings in which, remember, uh, 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 Nigerian politics is divided into polling units, polling units are inside wards, you know, so we need to understand all of this. And then another interesting one that we started exploring when the Not Too Young to Run Bill was what was basically famous at that time was the use of emails, SMSs, or calls to people representing us in the National Assembly. And one of the tools that uh, Yaga used at that time was saying, how will your representative be representing us in the National Assembly? And he doesn't want to put his faith and in support of the not too young to run be when even that man at his own time when he was 26 he was the chairman of the local government now you are now 86 your children have now grown up to that age and they are saying no they are not too young to run because they are not mature they are not equipped with certain information you know and so we saw the phone numbers of our senators our ministers uh, hundred members in the House of Rep being thrown out to the and we were told to bombard them with SMSs and calls, retreating that they support us. Same with doing the entrance protest where individuals were using different means to whip up sentiment, to speak to government, to end the brutality of the Nigerian police as it was called then. And it was an upward uprising with regards to the emancipation of people and how they felt in the country. You know, so. There are different means in which the political communication process goes through. But we should remember that it is a circle. And what matters in that circle is how it continues to roll around and around and around. And it only rolls around and around if you engage in that process. And so if you don't engage in that process, it's going to be a challenge. And when you engage in that process, how do you engage in that process? Are you reactionary? Are you progressive in your thinking? Are you empathetic? Are you diplomatic? And so I say, I am the president of Nigeria. There are individuals protesting that their source of livelihoods are being lost. They have no access to sustainable agricultural lands to plant their food crops. And in that light, they do not have means of sustenance. That's food to eat. And what did the president do? And the first thing he did was to say, you know what, open up the grain reserve, bring grain out for the people to buy at affordable rate. Why? Because it is grain that has been kept by the Nigerian government for a time like this. And so in this case now, I would say this particular um, response was empathetic and then progressive. Because empathetic in the sense that he understood the plight of the people and does not want them to die. And so he has now brought out grain for them to eat. And then let's use another option. Where in, um, let's look for a reactionary response. Uh, Nigeria and Dubai, when they said um, Nigerians have now been, will be issued visas to Dubai, blah, 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 after the meeting of the president with some new leaders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then what happened? Before we knew anything, and Julian Garali has put the information out there saying this is what has been achieved. Kudos to the president when that was not actually what we what was done. That is what we call reactionary communication. He didn't need to do that. All he needed to do was read, get the facts of the matter and share the facts of the matter because even when he was engaged on live TV, he tried to correct the assertions that they are earlier unpublished. And as usual, Nigeria came through with screenshots. He posted this at 6 07 p.m. So, so you said Nigerians will not be should this as why are you now talking from the other side of your mouth? You know, when we talk about diplomatic responses in the political communication process, in the case we are in, let's use um, Ife Modakeke crisis, it's something of old. If you are the only of Ife, 
how will you respond to a fellow Yoruba man fighting each other over land, ancestral land that both families or both people have been living and coexisting with for many years. Why is it that it's now in 1993 if a Amodake people want to now start fighting? You know, you need to be diplomatic. So if I was the only officer, obviously in trying to appeal to our people for peace, I will say it in a diplomatic manner. You know, so in, in all, you might now just begin to start thinking, are we sure communication in politics is not directly psychology? Because basically you're talking about how you can finger somebody's brain to understand what you want them to understand, whether it's the truth, whether it's the lie, and then not just understand it, sort of carry it up and start saying, yes, of this, of this party, of this party, of this candidate, of this, and truly I'm, I'm from the north, I'm from the south, I'm from the east, I'm from the west, I'm proudly this, I'm proudly that. So all of this now begins to come to bear in the entire communication process. And so we now go back to where we started from in the beginning, the struggle for power. When we define power as he who goes to what, when, and how. And then when we now summarize for this communication to say, he who says what, to whom, when, where, and with which medium. And in this class of communication in politics, communication in politics, I put it to you that we have said so much on Zoom to you that are online, when, 5 p.m., 6 p.m., we are online, and with which medium, Zoom. And so these are how you like in this basic concept to your everyday living to ensure you get the very best of it and then you can be able to relate and engage better, to become a better citizen of Nigeria, to become a better electorate, and to be truly politicized, as we call it in the Electoral College. And I hope that with these few words of mine, I have not confused or but rather convinced you to understand what I tried to put across to you. Thank you very much. So do we have contributions, comments, or questions? Thank you very much, sir, for the insightful lecture. Um, it's a pleasure seeing you again at this cohort. Um, if you have any questions, you can either put it in the chat box or indicate by raising your hands, then I'll ask you to unmute, then you can ask your questions. Do we have any questions so far? Mr. Kevin, they seem to have understood your lecture completely and no need to ask any further question. Okay, then that is a thing of joy. <laughs> so trying to look chat box to see you can see any there are no questions in the chat box yes. yet. So the beauty of the electoral college is such that we are a robust family. And so if you have any concerns, contributions, questions, you can share in your class or via your party, inter-party, inter-party relations. And it will be relayed back to us and we can give a feedback on that subject matter. And then better still, we are in the hands of Lisa, our Igbo executive director, Kunle Nawaz, who has given us the time to speak. And I'm sure that by the time you even go through the two of them, your questions are answered before you even get to us. But I want to assure you that we are with you all step of the way, and we are proud that you have stayed true to this time and attending the classes. And we look forward to your graduation ceremony where we all drink wine and be merry because we know that you have joined one in a billion politic individuals in Nigeria thanks to the Electoral College and with your help. So thank you. And so Saila, you have. All right, thank you again, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, in the absence of any questions, um, I, I saw the DED in class. Oh, she's dropped. If there's any other notice. Okay, I'm going to ask all of us to unmute and just say thank you to our, to our facilitator. Thank um, you very much. Thank you, sir. And just say thank you.
so much. Thank you. Great trusting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your lectures. Well appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you guys. Um I don't know if Charlie is still on. Are there any notices? Um, I hope party members right. have submitted their assignments. The ADO right. was asking if assignments have been submitted. Please, if they have not, please everybody should ensure they submit their assignments for the week. And we'll see tomorrow again in class in the absence of anything. Thank you. Have a good evening.